name was not Jesus's. Because it was that same name, Jesus, in the four gospel. But this time around, that name had been exalted. And we said that the cross of the mother is a cross and resurrection that has changed everything. The cross of the matter is a cross. So the cross became the dividing line between the Jesus of the four gospel, which is the incarnation, and the Jesus that is exalted. It was upon resurrection, God had highly given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And we want to establish this morning, adding further to what we did on Thursday, on Thursday we established from Psalm 8 verse 24 when he said this, the day of salvation, he said this is the day the Lord has made, is the day of salvation the day of salvation was going to come after resurrection, this morning in the leadership we were able to learn that resurrection is salvation how many of you remember that, resurrection is what, salvation, so it became the cross of the matter, so the cross is what changes everything, glory be to God, today we want to Start from Hebrews and chapter 1. So how did he get this name that has become our family name? The name with which when we speak, the demons listen. The name with which when we speak, heaven, earth, and things under the earth, they obey us. How did this name come about? Hebrews and chapter 1, verse 1 says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time, passed unto the fathers by the prophet. Verse 2, we are reading down to verse 5. Had in this last day spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the words. Verse 3 says, Who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, and opposing all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Verse 4, I want the whole church to read verse 4 with me. Be made a much better than he, as he had by what? Obtained than they all. So, the name Jesus came by inheritance. And that name is superior to the name of any angel. And that is what the Bible is saying. That after he went to the cross, he took our place, purged our sins, sat in the majesty on high. Verse 5 now says, For unto which of the angels said he had any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Now the word begotten simply means that today you have been born again. Jesus became born again. He is the first to be born again and we came in his order. The word begotten simply means he was born again from the womb of resurrection. So when Jesus was raised, he became born again. Now, don't forget, when he came into the world, he was the only begotten, but upon resurrection, he became the first begotten of the dead. That means that in his resurrection, it's our resurrection. As many that believe in him, resurrected with him, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Squeeze your neighbors and say, got the name by inheritance. Upon all that happened, he got the name by inheritance. And so the name Jesus is our inheritance. When you were born into a family, you were born to inherit the name of that family. And being born into Christ, you are born to inherit the name Jesus. So there is nothing wrong for you to use the name of Jesus at any given point in time. Because it is our inheritance. The name Jesus is the inheritance of the believer. Because by inheritance, he got that name. And because we are in him, that same inheritance has been given to us. And that is what the Bible says in the book of Colossians. In chapter 1 verse 18, very quickly, we will be speak, reading the Bible today. Explain it in Colossians 1 and verse 18. Look at what the Bible says. And he is the head of the body, the church. Who is the first? Who is the beginning? The first born from the dead. Who is the first born from the dead? Jesus. He is the first born from the dead. And so it is in that order when I came, that in all things he might have the preeminence. He might have the control. So he became the first begotten from the dead. Glory be to God forever. Backtrack to uh, uh, verse 12. Backtrack to verse 12. We're just going with scripture. Verse 12. Quickly. Give it thanks unto the Father. Which have made us partakers, or made us meet to be partakers of.
of what? Help me tap your neighbor. Say, I have an inheritance. And look at how he put it the inheritance of the saints in life. So all saints have also inherited the name of Jesus. So help me tap your neighbor. The name of Jesus is our family name. Say it like you mean say the name of Jesus is our family name. Oh, I will confirm that Ephesians and chapter 3. Quickly, we don't have more time. Freedom from verse 14. It's our family name now. So when I say Jesus, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to get holy like Peter said in, uh, in Acts 3 verse, uh, uh, verse 12. No, he's not trying to be holy to, get, to use it. No, it is not in his holiness. That name belongs to us. He said, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. Next verse, quickly. Of whom the whole family we have some in heaven already. You didn't hear me. I said some of our brothers already there. Oh, come on. After that, already some of our brothers are there. So Paul was like, for this cause, I bow my knees. To the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom the whole family in heaven and on earth. Do we have some of his family here? Look at them here. Come on, I said, look at them here. Philip, look at them here. We have them here. They are named. You are named after the name of Jesus. Come on, can I say it again? I said, you are named after the name of Jesus. So, person, for this cause, I bow my knees. To the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom the whole family in heaven. Some of our brothers are already there. And the ones here on earth are named. Because by inheritance, we got this name. It has become our family name. My younger brother, by virtue of the father, we come from the same womb. The same family name. My children, because the, 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 uh, my, uh, because of the number of children I have, all oh, the answer to my name. They don't need to work for the name. It is their inheritance. You that is seated here, the family tree or lineage where you come from, you didn't need to work for your son name. It is yours by inheritance. And that is how the name of Jesus is. So when you stand to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you are standing on your family lineage. That's why anybody that talks to you about generational causes does not understand a new order. In the new order, you have inherited a name. In that name, there is no family causes. There are no generational causes. There is no inheritance. Anything we inherited, we inherited Jesus. I didn't hear somebody say amen. Talk to neighbors, I inherited Jesus. Say like you mean, I inherited Jesus. So the name we inherited on resurrection money was Jesus. He inherited that name on resurrection money. And for every one of us that come in the order of Jesus, we have inherited the same name. That name, Jesus, is our family name. Oh, you know those days we used to sing, call it Jesus, Jesus, say Jesus, Jesus, how I love, how I love. Calling your name, oh Jesus, sweet Jesus, every day, every day, your name is this. What the name accomplished yesterday, that name accomplishes today. That same name can accomplish tomorrow. And that is my family name. I inherited that name. I am proud of that name. I'm not ashamed of that name. Any day I can use that name. The reason demon spirit bow before me is because of the name Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in the earth, and of things under the earth. So I'm not afraid. When people say, it's my me water spirit. It comes from the, uh, from the water world. I smile because my family name is bigger than it. When they say that thing, it's from the forest, it's from the bush, it's from the mountain. I don't care where it comes from. I'm glad because the name I have as an inheritance, the Bible says, of things in the earth. And I've heard people say, your problem is spiritual. The word heaven means the immaterial spiritual. And the name controls all three spheres. And that name has become my inheritance. When I use this name, I use it with confidence. Because I know it belongs to me. Squeeze your neighbors and say, Pastor is talking to you. Say it like you mean it. Say, Pastor is talking to you. Romans 8, 29. Quickly. I'm afraid to preach from 28. But let me start from 29. Romans 8, 29. Quickly. It said, For whom he did for known. He all 
also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That is, in the foreknowledge of God, he has already walked you to be in the order of Christ. You know what it means to foreknow? It means to be in advance. God's desire is that every child of God finds his destiny in Christ. Hmm. For whom he foreknow, he, because he foreknew me and he predestined me to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn. That's the prototokos. That is the prototype. Jesus is a sample of every believer. You didn't hear me. He's a sample. The unique type of every believer. And I may bold to say that the name of Jesus is given to you to replicate his act here on earth. Philip, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Squeeze your neighbor's hand. Say the name of Jesus is given to me to replicate all of his acts here on earth. Romans 8, just back, back to 17. Why do we say this? Look at verse 17. The reason we say this is because of what is in verse 17. It's like, if children dare heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, why would they call us joint heir with Christ? Because by inheritance, we inherited the name. We are joint heirs with him. We are one with him. He said, if, and if children dare heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, it so be that we suffer with him, that we should also be glorified together. So the name of Jesus has brought us into a family. And in this family, we inherited the name. So the name of Jesus came upon him, based on inheritance, inherited it on resurrection morning. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Say like when you say amen. amen. And so you don't work for a family name. You are born into the family and the beauty of it is we are born from the womb of death and upon resurrection we are born into a name and that name is the name of Jesus so I want you to quickly tap your neighbor say we got this name through inheritance and by that inheritance we have access to the use of this name raise up your right and say we are a joint heir with Christ we are inseparable. So Katizo. Wherever you find him, I am there. Wherever I am, he is there. We are too inseparable. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Maybe I'll read one scripture before I take to the other one. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. We read it this morning. Pastor read it in the course of teaching. 13, verse 33. Maybe we'll read from verse 32. 32. Acts 30. We read it this morning. So explosive. If you were not in the leadership meeting this morning, I'd like for you to get the outline. It'd be a great, great blessing. Hallelujah. Look at how it opened. And we declare unto you glad tidings. We declare to you good news. How that the promise which was made unto our fathers. What we have today was everything promised to our fathers. God had fulfilled the same unto us, their children. In that he had raised up Jesus again. As it is written also in the second book, in the second psalm. Thou art my son. This day, you became born again. He became born again not because he was a sinner. He that knew no sin became sin for us. So because he took our place, he needed to be born again. So that every man on earth will be in the order of the born again. He didn't hear me. Every man will be in the order of the born again. If the one who took the place of mankind became born again, every man will find his reality in him. So God's grand plan was the fact that he foreknew all men, he predestinated all men that they will be conformed to the image. The image is Christ. So every man finds his identity in Christ. You didn't hear me. Every man at you find his identity on Christ. This is why we go out of evangelism. Now, when you have not found Christ, you have not found destiny. Destiny is Christ. Can I say that again? Destiny is Christ. Stop looking or running about any man pursuing my destiny. Nobody fights your destiny. Your destiny is Christ. And that is the grand plan of God. Every man must be conformed to that image. So he predestinated us. Now the real destiny is Christ. When you are not in Christ, you can still be praying for destiny. But once you are in Christ,
destiny should be to come to Christ. Once you are in Christ, destiny is sealed. Sealed and settled. <laughs> We did before Ephesians 1 13. Maybe we'll do something like that. I think we did something that we we're sealed. We we're sealed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so excited this morning. We can call that name again, Jesus. I didn't hear you. You are calling it as though you have not eaten. Hallelujah. We should get excited. Hmm. Is it 13? Yeah, let's read 13. Hallelujah. In whom you are, you also trusted. After you heard the word of what? The word of what? The gospel of your salvation. As soon as you became saved, what happened? In whom also, after you believe, what happened to you? Come on, say it like you mean it. Come on, say it like you mean it. Come on, say it like you mean it. With what were you seen? So when you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, who cannot utter that destiny? Your destiny is sealed in Christ. Stop praying, praying useless prayer. Every enemy of my destiny, every man who stole my destiny, who stole my wedding gown, who stole my wedding ring, shut up. You are in Christ now. Hallelujah. Inside of Christ, those things don't happen. Because there is a seal. Why do you put a seal? To prevent unauthorized access. Can I say that again? Why do you put a seal to prevent unauthorized access? So the Holy Spirit becomes the seal of the believer. So nobody truncates your destiny. When you don't understand it, you pray stupid prayer. Say with me, my father, my father. The reason you won't say, my father, my father, is because you are in doubt. Because no man goes to see his biological father and goes to see him. My father, my father. He says, something is wrong with you. We need to look for a psychiatric doctor. A psychiatrist need to see you. So when I see believers say, Say with me, my father, my father. And you see the people, the congregants, who have no understanding, they shout, My father, my father. Anything pursuing my destiny. Anything. Turn it to prayer. Destiny, 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 destiny. That's destiny what every man's destiny must be found in Christ. And being found in him, there is a seed over you. Nobody steals you out. Let me tap your neighbor and say, nobody steals me out. There is a seal upon me. You know, Paul said, from henceforth, let no man trouble me. I bear in my body. There is a mark of Christ on you. Glory be to God forever. Squeeze your neighbor. The pastor is talking to you. Why are you doing shime shime? Hallelujah. Let's move on to the other one, which is by, uh, uh, he, he got it by, uh, and then he got it by conquest. Everybody say, by conquest. So he got that name by conquest. The word conquest simply means victory. He got it by victory. He went forth for it. He went forth. You know Nigeria was colonized by who? The British. So they subdued us. Come on. I watched one film October 1st. Is it October 1st or 1st of October? Something so. October 1st. And you could see the dominance of the uh, British over Nigeria. How that they legislated over us. They had different premier here and there. You read the history of Nigeria from 1960, and you see how that we got independence. But before that, Sir Lord Lugard, isn't it? I don't know anything sorry about him because he didn't do a good job. Otherwise, we won't be where we are now. Praise God. But we were subjugated because they prevailed over us by conquest. They had all the technology and kept us on that. I use that so that you understand that when people conquer a people, it doesn't mean that those people are no more. It means they have been withered down. Their powers have been reduced from them because of what I'm about to read. I'm explaining all of that. Colossians and chapter 2, verse 15. Maybe we'll read from verse 13. Let's enjoy ourselves. We are still in church. How did this name come about? Colossians 2. Let's read from verse number 13. My emphasis will start from 15. From 13, my emphasis will start from. Ha, 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 ha. Are you your sin and the uncircumcision of your flesh? Had he quickened together with him? That's talking about resurrection. Haven't forgiven you how many? Haven't forgiven you how many? I speak to your conscience. Every form of condemnation dies now. The work of Christ was a thorough job. You don't allow condemnation in your heart of any sin because the blood of Jesus poured you once and for all. Am I communicating? Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. 
that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way. What did he do? Hallelujah. Next verse. I want you to read this. And have us poor. Have us poor. Have us poor. Have me point at me. Say, Pastor, he got it by victory. He got it by conquest. He got it by act of his superiority. Have us poor. They were there, but he spoiled them. To spoil them does not mean completely they are no more. It means they were disarmed. So a man can be disarmed, but yet the man is still there. You know, when a, a thief is disarmed, he's powerless. The strength of a robber is his arm. That's why they are called armed robbers. If they were not armed, they can't hurt you. You didn't hear what I just said. Maybe my phone. Hey, give me the phone. And there's nothing to intimidate me with. Then the spirit of Sansi will come upon me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> And I will deal with you. Praise the name of the Lord. But once you are armed, it doesn't matter how big the man is. Maybe the guy is carrying one luga. Stainless luga. And it, it does like this. Whether there is a bullet or not, obey the last order. Bring the phone. Don't forget you can still buy another phone. It's, a, it's, it's an advice. Give it. But once they are disarmed, that is why when you see a man that has been dealt with by armed robbers, and the arm robber is caught. See how the man behaves. It, 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 was, it was this man. <laughs> why is that man hitting the arm robber? You know why? The arm has been disarmed. Am I communicating? So the devil and his cohort were disarmed. So the devils can see operate, but no arm in their hand. That's all the picture I've been trying to paint. Am I communicating? Now, let's use another two different rendering. Give me two different rendering. NLV, message, let's enjoy ourselves. That's why we're in church. So when I'm using the name of Jesus, I'm using that name against a disarmed fellow. Are you catching my point now? So the man does. You know, people, the way we behave in church is as though Satan has power. Mm. Satan has power. Mm. Mm. Satan. Mm. People talk more about Satan more than their victory in Christ. Look at it. In this way, everybody read with me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What did he do? Woo! How many of you fought those days? I fought those days. And I know you, everyone. And then when you win an opposition, what do you do? He was shamed. Thank you. He was shamed how? Probably. Now, but do you see? Oh, thank you so much. God disarmed principalities and powers that were rage against us and made a bold display and public example of them in triumphing over them, over him, and in it, where? The cross. The cross became the cross of the matter. It became the dividing line. Hallelujah. So the name was gotten by conquest. That's the point we want to deal with. Give me message rendering. Message rendering and one other very simple rendering. Hallelujah. Woo! Are you blessed today? Are you understanding what we are saying? Everybody read with me. One, I love this. He stripped of their sham authority at the cross. Hold it. Excuse me. Church, can we look up? Hey. You know, when you see people talk about occult power, they forget that what has happened is that they were stripped. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants, all those people. He had told that head mankind bound. He stripped the demon forces. He stripped their small, small spirits. They wanted them. In the universe, not the one only in your village. So how come the one in your, in your village is more powerful than all that they want, they would want Jesus to See, we, we have localized our faith. I've heard people say, excuse me sir, where do you come from? Dr. Combs, where do you come from? You are from Cross River. Eh, Pastor Charles, where do you come from? And I'm pressing. Pastor Barry, where do you come from? Mama, where do you come from? Akwaibon. Papi, where do you come from? Hello? 
of all these ones, the witchcraft in Edo is more than their own. Their own is. You see, we have localized ourselves. But if you read the scripture, you find out. He stripped all the spiritual tyrant in the universe beyond your village. Therefore, no force and power can hold you back. If you didn't hear me, tap your neighbor say, beyond your village. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, beyond your village. So the name of Jesus is oppression. In the universe, what he did was not a local work. <laughs> what he did was not a local work. It was not done in the corner. Acts 26, 26. He said, the king went of these things before whom I stand. For the king knows that what he did was not done in the corner. It was not done in the corner. It was not done in the corner. It was a universality. Said, for the king knows about this matter. It is to him. I am actually speaking. But before I am convinced. That any of these things escape his notice. Since this was not done in the corner. Oh king. The death of Jesus was not a corner corner thing. He stripped. Come on put that script off me again. He stripped. Thank you so much. You are doing well. He stripped. So he got it by conquest. Squeeze your neighbors and say, he got it by conquest. Say it! Hallelujah. Put it back again. Colossians 2.15. We have we used two other renderings. Ah, ah, ah. Colossians, they were paraded. Are you seeing? So the name of Jesus was not just given. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and disgraced them. Ooh. He triumphed over them by him. There was one we were reading where he says stripped. Let me... So he stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. Stay in front, stay in front. <laughs> Stay front. Bum, 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 say, I don't do it again. I don't do it. Bum, 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 bum. I'm powerless. I'm powerless. Bum, 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 bum. How come? What just do that? That's how his name came. That same name is effective. It's potent. And whenever you stand upon that authority, the demons recognize that the same name that, defe that defeated them is the one in use. Am I communicating? The name of Jesus is not used for cutting of cake. Pastor Fadi, you are doing your very day. Brotherly, come and coordinate the cutting of the cake. Brotherly holds the, 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 mic, the microphone. Give me a J! Everybody answer me. Give me a U! A E E. I've forgotten the spelling. Give me a U! A e. Give me a. Give me a. Give me a. What do we have? Hey. They have got the cake. That's how you have reduced that name in your thinking. It loses its potency. In your mind, not in the name. Because by conquest, he didn't conquer cake. So stop using it to conquer cake. Tap your neighbor, say, then coca cake. <laughs> Why people laugh? Is it not the truth? We have reduced everything. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See, this cake is beautiful. Yellow, yellow speaks for what? Star Rosary. What does Rosary speak that? White, purity. At least I remember that one. White, what? Purity. <laughs> So we are going to cut the cake at the spelling of J K E S U S. Everybody shout! Mm. He didn't disarm cake. It was for spirits being a head man bound. Spiritual tyrant like that one. Imagine true. Naked. Not cake. Sham authority. I like that word. Fake authority. Yeah, yeah, power. 
You know, we used to sing those days, good, good songs. But now we don't sing good songs again. Hallelujah. The next verse, sorry. The next verse before I get, I'm getting ahead of myself. I think we should close. Everybody read with me. So, don't put up with any pressure. Anyone pressuring you in details of diet, worship services, or holidays. Don't let anybody put, put pressure on you. And say, why are you eating this? Eh, don't eat any animal blood. Then, eh, that, is, that is animal blood. Don't let anyone, eh, why do people worship on Sunday? They do not Sabbath. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. He said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. I fulfill Sabbath. Sabbath was made for him. After him, no more Sabbath. So I feel for Sabbatarian. Seven days Adventists. They are all Old Testament people. What did I say? Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. He said the Sabbath was made for me. I fulfill the Sabbath. After me, no more Sabbath. So we can choose that every Monday morning we'll be holding service. So any day we choose is the day God operates. God is not tied to any day. So when the Bible was saying this is the day, it was the day of salvation, not a calendar day. Am I communicating? Is it not clear? So don't let anybody pressurize it. Say, if I go to church on Sunday, if I'm not reading the Bible, where do? Don't you understand? Even Jesus Christ, they met him. I said, why did you eat on the Sabbath? Because the Sabbath is holy. Jesus said, Meshon, no. how many of you, even the Sabbath day, your horse is hungry, you don't give them food. He said, excuse me, in case you don't know, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was pointing to me. Now that I have come, I have ended Sabbath. What is Sabbath? Sabbath means rest. I hope you know Sabbath means rest. Who is rest? Come unto me, all ye who labor and of the heavy laden. I will give you. Come on, let me give you a scripture to that. Let me digress. Matthew 11, 28, 29, and 30. And I like to use message rendering. You like that? I like message rendering on this issue. Glory! I thought somebody said glory. I said, oh, I said glory! glory. You will take me back to that scripture when I'm through. Are you tired? One half. Born out on religion. Because that's what religion offers. Come to me. Religion of Sabbath day, not Sabbath day. Come unto me. Cast, get away with me. And you will recover your life. You will sh show, I will show you how to re-rest. Because he's the re-rest. He's a Sabbath. Next verse. Next verse. Walk with me. And walk with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhyme. Reading of what? Grace. I won't lay any heavy or ill-fitting on you. I will not lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Last verse. Keep company with me. And you will learn to live freely and well. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. I say he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Come on, put it back. Colossians 2 verse 16. See how he got the name by conquest. So don't let anybody put you under pressure. I saw the amplified you put. Let me see the amplified. I love this. I'm, oh, good. He said, let no man therefore judge you in myth or thing or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Don't let any man put pressure on you. Next verse. Next verse. 17. Which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. All those things were pointing to one person. Who were they pointing to? Hallelujah. Is that clear enough today? Is that clear enough? I don't like your pastor. Your pastor does not keep the Sabbath day holy. Church, after service today, if you can rest, rest. If you have any business to do, go and do. What did I say? You are not in Israel. A day is not holy. People make the day holy. The mountain was called a holy mountain because of the presence of God. Remove God from anything. There is no more holiness. What makes today holy is that the children of God came today to say we want to worship God today. He made, we brought God here. Made today holy. After service, if you want to observe rest, because we rest is in Christ and you have enjoyed Christ, take a nap. If you can change gear from gear 1 to 2, 3, 4, 5, 
If five, at least five gear is enough, you have engaged enough speed. Sleep, and if there's any business come, come in the house this evening, I'll catch up with you. We need to finalize that deal. Tomorrow is Monday, and you'll be having too many persons in your office. I'd like to tie up that deal today. Don't get religious. Don't be able to calabar people. On Sunday, they don't open markets. After today, if you can open market, open market. Hallelujah. Somebody say in church today. Doctor comes. Even if you stole me after service, no problem. Eh? Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. <laughs> We're just in church. But because my wife traveled to Calabar some years ago and her car developed fault. She had to manage that car back to Port Harcourt. The shock was giving problems. Smoking as a matter of fact, resting on the time. No place to buy uh, spare parts because they did carnival and then from carnival it ran into Sunday. Is that, no mechanic was ready to work. What makes it holy? People make a day holy. Can I say that again? People make a day holy. Glory be to God. But that's not what I want to teach on. Hallelujah. Hebrews 2. Let me read two scriptures and I just close. Hebrews 2 11. Oh, you people made me to stray. I command myself to come back. In Jesus' name! You see how the name of Jesus works? I'm back. Eh? This action. Okay. For born he that sanctified, and they who are sanctified are what? So the Jesus that sanctified you, and the Jesus and you, how many are you now? The one. We have, we have inherited that name. For which cause is not ashamed to call them a dead force. From the same womb. From the same womb. Next verse. We'll read down to 15. From 14 will you. Saying I will declare thy name unto my brethren. Who are his brethren now? In the midst of the church will I sing praise. Next verse. And again I will put my trust in him. And again behold. I and the children which God has given me. You completed that one. It's quoting Isaiah. I hope you know. For as much. Let me start with Amplified here. Amplified here. Let's enjoy this from Amplified. Since then, this his children share in flesh and blood, in the physical nature of human beings. He himself, talking about Jesus, in a similar manner, partook of the same nature. That by going through death, he might bring to naught and make of no effect him who had the power of death. That is who? Next verse. Let's enjoy 15 together. And also that he might deliver and completely set free all those who through the haunting fear of death were held in bondage throughout the whole course of their life. So what Christ did delivered you from the fear of death and from the work of bondage. Every time we use the name of Jesus, we are saying we are far from fear and bondage. Glory to God. Blessed already? Are we blessed already? Finally, John 7 21 to 23. This was the prayer Jesus prayed before the cross. And was praying it for us. Jesus answered them. 17, 17. John 17. 17, 21 to 23. 21 to 23. Jesus answered them. 17. That they all may be what? That they all may be what? Just as you, Father, are and I that they also may be so that the world may believe and be convinced that you have sent next verse King James King James this one is too long it's taking my time King James please 22 and the glory that glory came upon resurrection true of us that was where he was exalted and the glory which thou gave us me I am giving for what purpose? Uh -huh. Everybody read 23 together. One, two, go. I in them, thou 
in me that they may be made perfect in one and the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them joint heir together inherited through the victory his victory is my victory so when sickness comes to your body tell that sickness I have the victory in the name of Jesus I have the victory that you don't lie in the name of Jesus I have the victory therefore get out of my my side every lying symptoms around you it's time to wake up to the use of the name found in Jesus cannot be found in you and I stand today upon the integrity of that name sickness cannot be found in Jesus and I don't care the name with which the doctors have named that sickness in the name that is above every name I command its existence out of your body in the name of Jesus high blood pressure give way sugar diabetes give way arthritis give way Romantic give way, weak heart give way. I command your heart to be strong. Every organ of your body be strong. Your kidney be strong. Your liver function well. Your eye function well. Your hands are strong. Your bones are strong. Your mouth are strong. Your veins are strong. Your blood is purified. No malaria parasite runs through your body. In the name Jesus, quack your neighbor, say, I am one with him. There is victory all over me. And I speak to you the rest of your day. And last time you had luck will be the last time you will ever experience luck. I stand upon the integrity of God's word. Money comets. Money comet. Money comet. Money comet. Money comet. Satan, take your hand off their finances. Satan, take your hands off their finances. Ministry Spirit, go! Cast the money to come! In the name of Jesus! We stand upon this name. And everything that is due you, that any man has been sitting upon, I demand the removal of that person. And I command the release of what belongs to you! In the name of Jesus, we grow strong. Your children will grow strong. Your children will make you proud. Your children will excel in every field of human endeavor. In the academics, they will excel. In the name of Jesus, I break the barriers of wickedness. I break the barriers of wickedness. Every manipulation around you, around your family, I stand upon the integrity that is in the name of Jesus. I declare your freedom in the name. Jesus and I command dead things around you to come alive in that name that is above every name I command every dead thing around you to come alive I speak life to every dead thing around you I speak life that business that you have given up on I speak life to that business that building that you have stopped working on I command smiths to come for that building I command the blocks to come I command the wood to come I command money for the completion of that building and you say there is no money to complete the payment. I stand in the name of Jesus. I command that this month, money will need money in your hand. Oof. Nothing dies in you. Nothing dies around you. Every man that is connected to you, the Bible says God will perfect all that concerns you. I pray for your brothers. I pray for your sister. I pray for your husband. I pray for your wife. I decree nothing dies in that. Nothing dies around you. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death. Therefore, everything he that told that I'm giving up, I command the life of Jesus. Over oh, that in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let go, cheat Tebala. That sword that refused to heal. I command it to dry up. I command that sword to dry up. So the surprise of the doctor, I command them to dry up. I command the pain in your father's leg to be healed right now. I command the pain to be healed right now. Thank you, Father. Oh, this is the time to rise and speak using the power 
that the Lord has given on to every circumstance, situation that we meet, using the name that is above all the name. The name is Jesus, is the power that we have. The name I know, the name I have, is the name of Jesus. The name is one. Let's go. 